Welcome to Make Something. Today we're going to talk about all the things that you need to do before going into the shop to start a woodworking project. We're going to take some measurements, we're going to write down our wants, our needs, and our constraints, and we're going to sketch out the project on paper. And today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. Check it. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. This was suggested by a Patreon member and I thought it was a great idea. Usually in these build videos, we breeze past the why and the problem solving and the sketching part of the projects and just get right into the build. Today we're totally gonna flip the script. And this video is all about taking measurements, working within constraints, writing down our needs and desires, and problem solving, sketching with a pencil and paper. This really is the perfect project to do this because what I'm about to make none of you are going to want to make none of you need this and this is going to be very personalized to my needs i make most of the music in my videos here in my office and back here is what i'm calling analog corner where i have all my analog effects all my analog synthesizers and my tape machines and it's a mess. There's just wires everywhere. There's not room for everything. And we're gonna fix that. This is one of those projects that's really going to improve my life here in the office. Currently, this is just a mess of wires. I can't fit all of my guitar pedals over here. And I have synths laying around that I don't use because there's no room for them. So today, I wanna build a cabinet that goes back here. But we have a few problems to work on. So let me take you and show you what we have and what we need to make. Currently, everything is sitting on this cabinet that I made. This is one of my very first woodworking projects. I don't even have a video on this. This was before I was making YouTube videos. And really, the cabinet wasn't even big enough, so I have a sheet of plywood on top of it to hold more stuff. We're gonna take all of this out and we're going to build a cabinet that's going to fit over here. This is my desk over here, and so I need it to fit between the desk and the wall. And then it needs to fit underneath this bookshelf here. So I'm gonna take down those measurements right now. Measuring from the wall to my desk is 35. So my very first constraint is 35 inches. We'll go 34 inches wide just to be safe. And it has to fit underneath this bookshelf, which is 52 inches. I wanna maximize my depth because it's gonna hold a lot of stuff, but I don't wanna come out past this window. So 26 inches deep. So, we're gonna have a cabinet that is 51 and three quarters inches tall, going to be 34 inches wide, a depth of 26 inches. At the very top of this cabinet, I want this patch bay. Basically, this patch bay is going to allow me to plug in different guitar pedals and synths into my audio interface without getting behind there and pulling out wires. I can do it all up front with this interface. So everything gets plugged in in the back and then I can patch in the synths and effects here in the front. Even though the wires are gonna hang down over other things, uh, this is gonna go at the very top of the cabinet. It just makes the most sense and it's the easiest accessible place for this to go. That patch bay is going to fit in right there and that is one and three quarter inches tall. And then underneath that patch bay, I want a shelf to pull out that has all of my effects. I found the tallest one, and I know that I need three and a quarter inch clearance for this to slide out. And then underneath that, I want three more pull out shelves that'll hold the synthesizers and drum machines. And I measured that, and I think I need four inch clearance for all of those to pull out. And then I need a shelf underneath that, that is gonna hold this effect. This is a tape echo. There's actually tape inside that moves around. And then this old reverb unit down here. And then the bottom shelf is gonna hold this tape deck, which is 17 inches from the bottom to the top. This project is pretty straightforward and something simple like this, I wouldn't draw up in Fusion 360, but I wanted to show you what I have in my head. So we have the cabinet here with our proper height and depth. And this is the tape deck down in here. And then these are the two effects units that I wanna have. This shelf is going to be dadoed into the side and that is going to really, really sturdy up this cabinet. And then we have four shelves here that are all going to be on drawer slides so they can pull out and I can access the effects and synths. And then you have the patch bay up top here. 
pretty darn simple. Like I mentioned, I wouldn't normally draw this up in Fusion 360. I just wanted to give you a, a visual. So let's pretend that I have the dimensions I want on paper. This part can be done with a computer, but it's easier for me to visualize how many sheets of plywood I'm going to need for this. So, and it turns out I have three sheets of plywood. I have one long side here, one long side here, the top, the bottom, these are the four pull-out shelves on the drawer slides, and then this is that shelf that is dadoed in there. This is drawn up in Illustrator. These sheets of plywood are four foot by eight foot. So one of the internal debates that I had with myself that I kept going back and forth was, if I reduce the depth of the cabinet to 23 and a half inches, I could have got these two pieces on this and save myself a full sheet of plywood. I decided instead of saving a sheet of plywood, that that depth was really important to me. Even though it's just two inches, I need it. I'm gonna need that for all the effects units that I have. So I decided I'm going to go with three sheets of plywood. The other thing is that middle shelf, the grain is going to go the wrong way. And because I couldn't get this to fit in anywhere, I'm going to be okay with that. And you're not really even going to see that middle shelf because it's gonna be covered up with stuff anyway. So now I have this all sketched up. I know I need three sheets of plywood and four sets of 24 inch drawer slides. I'm using the shop grade plywood, which is gonna have voids and weird markings and shop grade walnut, I know sounds crazy. It's still beautiful, but it's gonna, it might have some defects. I'm going to consider this project a prototype because I wanna live with it for like a year and see if it needs to be rebuilt, changed up, or maybe it'll be perfectly fine. So it's a prototype, but it's like, it's let, let's say it's somewhere between a prototype and a finished product. So I want it to look halfway decent, but I'm not going to add any embellishments to it. I'm gonna cover up the plywood edges with edge banding. If this was a piece of furniture that I was gonna put in my living room that people were going to see and I wanted to look beautiful, I would use actual hardwood for my edge banding and not the, the crappy glue on stuff. Um, I, 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 I really don't like the look of edge banding. It, it's never, it, it never matches the color of the walnut. You can always see the glue lines and then sometimes it peels off down the road. I really don't like edge banding at all, but for this, it's gonna be perfectly fine because this is the prototype. And edge banding also doesn't take a beating like real wood does. So this is a walnut plywood top on my desk here. And then instead of using edge banding, I glued on a solid piece of walnut and there's dings and dents in there from my chair hitting it. Edge banding would have come apart by now. I'm not gonna fuss over sanding too much. I'm just gonna put a quick coat of spray lacquer on there and I don't even care if it looks good or not. This is an experiment. This is a prototype. Nobody is gonna see this except for me and it's gonna be mostly covered with equipment. So it's mostly a functional thing. So today I'm not gonna really care about the look of it and uh, that's not how I usually go about my projects. Usually I spend a lot of time on sanding and finishing and design and trying to make it look unique. Basically today, we're just building a big old box. This should be a really quick, easy project. Uh, there's only one, two, three, four, uh, five pieces for the cabinet. The, 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 uh, there's no back. I want the back open so wires can get through there. Um, I'm, I do wonder if not having a back on there is going to cause some stability issues. We'll see. That middle shelf is going to be dadled into the two sides. And on the corner, we're gonna do a 45 degree miter with a spine in there to strengthen that up. That way I don't have to do any edge banding along the top and the bottom. So now I'm going to head over to my local plywood dealer and pick up some sheets and then we're going to just quickly breeze through this build and I will see you at the back end and we'll discuss what worked or what didn't work and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I don't know how it's going to go yet. Hopefully it goes well.
So before I get into the details of what went wrong and how I fixed it, I would like to tell you about today's sponsor and that is Squarespace. It's 2022. Can you believe it's 2022? We made it. I've heard that some of you don't have a website. Did you not just hear me say that it's 2022? We should all have a website. You're probably a lot like me. You enjoy making things. Maybe you would like to make things and sell them. Maybe you don't want to sell things, but you want a central place to have a gallery, a portfolio, a place for you to show off your work. Squarespace is the perfect place to do so. For 10 years, I used to sit at a computer every day at work and make websites. I used to really enjoy doing that until I got into woodworking and then I decided I wanted to make things with my hands and not spend so much time in front of the computer coding all day. So. I switched to Squarespace and started focusing on my woodworking. This was way before Squarespace was even a sponsor. I chose Squarespace because my friends were using Squarespace and it's easy to use. They have a ton of beautiful templates. When I say beautiful templates, I mean, all you gotta do is plug in your copy, plug in some of your photos, and you're good to go. You can also customize it to look exactly the way you want. You get to choose how much time you want to spend on your website. I know it's 2022, but some of y'all still have some business cards and some of your business cards are messy. And it's got your Twitter and your Facebook and your Instagram and your website and your, no, 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 no. If you have to have a business card, just put your name and your Squarespace site. That's all you need to do, clean it up. It's 2022, it's time to clean up your business card. Visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Happy 2022. Let me tell you about this guy. It is all done. I'm very happy with it. The song that you heard in the video, I made after I put everything in the rack and tested it out. It works great. It makes life a lot easier when it comes to making music. Some of you may be wondering why I had that big concrete weight on top of the plywood when I was cutting the dado at the table saw, and that was to keep the plywood flat so the dado was the same depth all the way through. If you've ever cut dados on the table saw, you know sometimes the, the plywood on big sheets like that can bow a little bit, and then in the middle, it is not as deep as it is on the outside. So just having that big weight on there will make sure that it stays flat. It also made the board easier to control through the table saw since it's it's so big. I had to do most of the cutting with the track saw because it was just too big for the table saw. I don't have eight feet behind my table saw, so I don't have room to get a full sheet through there. Even if I did have room behind me, I actually don't have enough room in front of my table saw because it would hit my workbench. It probably looks like I had this huge massive shop, but with a wide angle lens, it kind of distorts things. I wish my shop was like four foot longer and I could have that eight foot in front and behind my table saw to make life a little bit easier, but it is what it is. There's no reason for me to complain. I've, I have have my dream shop. So let's talk about where things went south for me. So all the corners are the 45 degree miters and I was expecting to cut all the boards to size with the track saw and then make that miter cut at the table saw. Turns out the boards were too big. There was no way for me to safely or accurately cut those miters. So then I had to tilt my track saw to 45 degrees and cut them. Getting your track saw to cut a perfect 45 is not nearly as easy as getting your table saw to do so. And then I couldn't figure out how to cut splines. Since the boards are too big to run through the table saw, I couldn't figure out how to cut the splines with the track saw. Uh, at least the slots for the splines. I had no reinforcements, so I got it to glue up just fine. But for the bottom, I drilled some holes and put some dowels in there to reinforce those joints a little bit. But I didn't do that at the top because I didn't want the ends of the dowels to be visible. So for the top, I glued in these corner brackets that touch each piece and kind of holds it all together. And that is completely hidden by this uh, rack mount face here, so you won't see that. This dado shelf down here goes halfway into each of the side pieces, and that's where a lot of the strength comes from. Since I wasn't planning on putting a back on there, I wasn't sure if it was going to be stable enough and it turns out that that dado shelf really stabilized it so it wasn't needed. I did rot a groove 
on the back end of all four pieces in case I had to put it back on there to sturdy it up. I did, it wasn't necessary, not necessary at all, but I did put a small little strip up top and then I stripped down the middle there just in case. So glue and a nail gun, but there is no side to side wobble at all. It's, it's sturdy as AF. On the front of all the drawers, I just glued a solid piece of, of walnut because I wanted a little lip on the bottom there where I could put my fingers there and pull out the, the drawers. The drawer slides are the soft clothes. So that, that's a really cool function. I talked about how I hate edge banding at the beginning of the video. I've already have issues with the edge banding coming undone from just equipment hitting on the side there. If down the road, I don't have any changes that I wanna make to this, I could take off all the edge banding and glue on some solid walnut uh, and I could even get fancy with that if I wanted to have it stick out a little bit create some reveals and embellishments so we'll see we'll see where I'm at a year from now after I got it in here I decided I wanted one more pull out shelf down here for the four track and then below that I'm going to make a box that can come out and can store all of my cables in there so I haven't done that yet but that's going to go right there I'll very quickly show you what's in here and, and how this all works. You can see it barely fits underneath the bookshelf. I did not give myself a lot of extra room, but thankfully it fits. I cut out this piece of acrylic on the laser and it's just hot glued on the front there. It kind of labels everything. This section goes to the computer. I have the reel to reel in and out. I have some synth and drum machines and then the four track, another synth. And then the rest are all the effects pedals. And I'll show you how the patch bay works here in a second. I'll quickly just show you what's on each shelf. Now the wires do hang down and that kind of stinks, but it's fine for what it is. As you can see, there's a huge mess of wires in here. It doesn't really bother me, but I have started cutting my own wires to length using these Three Monkeys solderless patch cable kits. And basically you just cut the cable to length and then you screw on the ends. It works. It, works pretty cool because um, it would take a long time to solder all these wires but basically this is all the effects pedals and then they all go into this power supply back here which is currently floating around and then uh, I do have to kind of lift this up to close that and then the next drawer Got the drum machine, got a synthesizer, and then another synthesizer. That one's not hooked up yet because I don't have enough cables. I've got more cables on order. Next up, another synth, and then there's a synth back here that's not hooked up yet. Still need more cables. And then check out the soft clothes. Ah, that is sexy. And then next on down the list is another synth, a, another drum machine, and then another little synth down there. And down here, the, the tape echo, the old reverb unit. There is a power conditioner underneath here and there's one switch to turn everything on and off. And luckily I get no buzz. And I think it's all because everything is plugged into the same power conditioner. And then down here, I have a pullout drawer for the four track. I added this after I moved everything in here and thought I need one more little spot. And then, so below that, I will have a box that will come out and all my cables can go in there. And then my two track reel to reel. So here's how the patch bay works. Let's say I wanna plug in this keyboard into the computer. This is the MS1. So I find the MS1 here on the patch bay and I can go directly into the computer. But now I want to add an effect to that. So I can come out of the MS1 into the delay and then out of the delay and into the computer. And now you hear an echo effect. It's a little dry, so maybe I want to add a reverb. So I will come out of the delay into the reverb and then out of the reverb and into the computer. And that is how the patch bay works. I don't have to get in here and swap wires around. I don't have to get behind the computer to the audio interface. It is all right here up front. I'm not gonna get into what each individual keyboard and effect and drum machine is. If enough people ask, I'll make a video and put that on the second channel. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in a few days with another new woodworking project. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.